Bhagavad Gita, verse 2.11 Sri Bhagavan said, Though you are speaking learned words, you lament for that which is not worthy of grief. Those who are truly learned lament not for the living nor for the dead. Sar Ardhavarshini Shri Krishna says, O Arjuna, your grief, which is born from the painful thought of killing your relatives, is illusory. Your question, how shall I fight with Bhishma, shows that your reasoning is based on ignorance. To explain why the above statement is true, Sri Bhagavan says, Ashochyan Anva Shochaha. You are grieving for that which is not worthy of grief. Sri Krishna further says, Even after being reassured by me, you are asking questions such as Katam Bhishmam Aham Sankye. How can I fight with Grandfather Bhishma? Gita 2.4 Even though you are presenting yourself as a learned personality, your presentation of such arguments and logic shows that you are not actually learned and that you actually have no knowledge. The wise do not lament for a gross material body from which the life air has gone, because the body is temporary. Agatasun means from whom the life heir has not gone. Until one achieves the stage of liberation, the subtle body is indestructible. The learned or wise do not lament even for the subtle bodies of such persons. In both conditions, with and without life, the nature of both the gross and subtle bodies is unchangeable. Yet foolish people lament for the gross body of their father or relatives when the life heir leaves it. They do not lament for the subtle body because generally they do not have knowledge of that. Bhishma and others are also the soul and covered by the gross and subtle bodies. Since the soul is eternal, To lament for it is improper. Earlier you were saying that scriptures on morality are superior to scriptures on economical development. But know that scriptures on knowledge from where this understanding comes, Jnana Shastra, are superior even to scriptures on morality, Dharma Shastra. Sar Ardhavarshini Prakashika Riti The portion of the Supreme Absolute Reality, who is composed of eternity, consciousness and bliss, that is endowed only with the marginal potency, Tatasta Shakti, is called the Jeev Atma, the individual soul. The Jeevas are atomic particles of consciousness, and their eternal and natural characteristic is to serve Bhagavan. Jivas are of two types, liberated, mukta, and conditioned, bada. The liberated souls are eternally engaged in the service of Sri Bhagavan in his abode. They never fall down. The conditioned souls have forgotten the service of Sri Bhagavan since time immemorial and thus being covered by the two types of material bodies, gross and subtle, They are suffering from the three types of miseries as punishment in this material world. The gross body of the conditioned soul is made of the five material elements, earth, water, fire, air and sky, and it is temporary and perishable. After death, the soul changes his gross body. When there is birth, death will always follow. Today, tomorrow, or after some years, death is certain. Srimad Bhagavatam 
1.38 O great hero, one who takes birth is sure to die, for death is born along with the body. One may die today or after hundreds of years, but death is sure for every living entity. In the Gita 2.27 it is said, Chatasyahi Dhruvo Mrityuhu For one who has taken birth, death is a certainty. That which covers the pure nature of the soul is called the subtle body, and it is made up of mind, intelligence and false ego. In each birth, one is granted a new gross body, and at the time of death, that body is destroyed. But such is not the case with the subtle body, because the jiva has forgotten Sri Krishna's Swarupa, or eternal form, the subtle body has covered the jiva's Swarupa since time immemorial. This subtle body cannot be dissolved even after remembering Bhagavan through such processes as knowledge, yoga, austerities, meditation or the study of the Vedas. It can only be dissolved by remembering him through the medium of pure devotional service to him, Bhagavad Bhakti. At that time the soul becomes situated in his pure nature. Pritirna Yavan Mai Vasudeve Na Mukayate Deha Yogena Tavat Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.6 Therefore, until one has love for Lord Vasudeva, who is none other than me, he is certainly not delivered from having to accept a material body again and again. Sa lingena bimukyate Srimad Bhagavatam 4.29.83 he will be liberated from the bodily conception of life by hearing my pastimes. Bayam dviti yabini veshataha syat Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.37 Fearfulness is caused by forgetfulness of the Lord and it is the cause of the bodily conception of life. Yada Ratir Brahmani Naishtiki Puman Srimad Bhagavatam 4.22.26 Upon becoming fixed in his attachment to the Supreme Personality, the living entity burns up his material surroundings exactly as fire arising from wood burns the wood itself. Mam Upetya Tu kaunteya punar yanma na vidyate. Srimad Bhagavad Gita 8.16 But one who attains me, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. When we study these verses, it becomes quite clear that although the subtle body has no big beginning, it is acquired by forgetfulness of Bhagavan and destroyed by remembrance of him. Therefore, those who know the nature of the soul to be immutable, imperishable and eternal do not lament or become disturbed at the loss of the gross body. They grieve neither for a gross body without a soul nor for a gross body with a soul, which will be destroyed in the future. On the other hand, those who consider their gross body to be their self are ignorant. Such persons are not even aware of the subtle body, what to speak of the soul. They consider the gross body, which contains the soul, to be their mother, father, brother or relative. When the soul leaves that body, they consider their mother, father, brother or relative to be dead and they lament for that body.